Say hello to my beaver friend. I've had this statue for a few years um, out in the yard. I uh, got this down the Oregon coast at a place called Flamingo Gyms years ago. A uh, place that sells odd, odd uh, kind of beach stuff and statues and who, who, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, um, today we're going to talk about how to make a mold uh, from start to finish to be able to duplicate a statue like this into concrete garden art. Uh, we're going to take this and make a latex rubber mold on top of this and then after that, when that's all uh, dried and cured, we're going to go and make a fiberglass shell so that we can go and pour um, hundreds of these potentially over over time. So the first thing in getting your statue ready to duplicate is to get it prepared for the latex rubber. And so, uh, number one, you want to go and get this thing clean. So any dust, debris, that sort of thing that's on there, any loose parts. Uh, if you've had it out in the weather and there's moss or just gunk from outside, get it uh, clean. Go ahead and wash it off, uh, spray it off, whatever you got to do, and then let it dry out. Uh, if there's any repairs you want to make on this or any tweaks, like for example, I've got a statue that I'm getting ready to do, uh, it's a uh, large tortoise that I've had for years. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that again because my mold is uh, getting towards the end of its life. But I've got some little tiny air bubbles I've noticed uh, that were from the original. And so uh, if it was in this case, I'd go and uh, want to get those either shaved off or fill in some, uh, if I have little bubble or spots, just get it so the surface is how I want it when it's finished. Because uh, whatever blemish you have on there is going to be on there for the next 200 statues that you make. Call it um, uh, beauty marks. So in this case, this thing is in real nice. It's got a kind of a good fur pattern. It's got some good texture in there. Uh, so it's ready to go. Um, I will oftentimes make this on a melamine surface. Now you don't have to use this. You can use plywood. I've done plywood. I've done uh, hard plastics, things like that. But uh, I like the melamine because when I have scraps of it around the house, uh, it's a very smooth surface. So as far as the latex rubber, when it goes on there, um, it's easy to get off. It doesn't necessarily uh, kind of uh, embed into it like some more porous plywood might. Uh, so I like to use this, just easy. It's also firm and, um, and cheap is what I got. So just some sort of surface. Uh, you want to have your board uh, probably at least two inches um, or more uh, bigger than the statue, the bottom of the statue. So, you know, I could go a little bit bigger on this, but this will work fine as it's got a nice uh, rim. And this becomes actually kind of a, a rim or um, just kind of the, uh, the lip of the statue mold when it's upside down later. And I'll show you that when we get to it much later. Um, okay, so I have this thing set. Uh, if this was not a concrete, if this was like a light plastic or something that's pretty, um, if it's light, you want to make sure that it's very much secured to the thing. So uh, I do this even with concrete, but I'll just go ahead and put a, a little lip of hot glue around it, get it in place, just so it's stuck on there during these first few coats of the latex rubber. Um, that's important. So I've got my glue gun, uh, been warming that thing up. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put a little lip of glue on some of the parts. And you'll see at the very end of this process, when I go to take it apart, um, this will be pretty well stuck on there. Um, I'm not super worried with this being a, a piece of concrete. It's not going to go 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 anywhere, but i to get this thing centered. Okay. For the second step, uh, we are going to actually be moving into the liquid latex rubber and getting a mold built on this. Uh, this first coat is super simple. Uh, it's actually going to end up taking 12, 16 coats. Uh, it kind of depends on um, this and how thin it is and just some parts that we'll talk about later. But uh, we're going to be putting uh, numerous coats on this. So we'll paint it essentially like we're painting a, um, you know, a real thick paint on here and uh, let it dry, come back uh, you know, the next day. On some days you could you know, do one in the morning or in the evening, but with my work and all that, uh, I'll do about one a day and I'll kind of walk through that process. This first coat is basically, we're just going to cover this thing in, in a very thin coat of the latex, and then coat number two is where we have to start figuring out things like seams and uh, kind of planning it out of how this thing would come apart if it's full of concrete. So we'll talk about that next, but first, uh, just some basic supplies that you're going to need. You're going to need uh, chip brushes, and so nothing fancy about those. Now, as far as the li liquid latex rubber, uh, I usually use a product that I love. Um, I've gotten it off of, from Tap Plastics, T-A-P, and they've been out of stock of it for over six months. I'm not sure the whole deal on that. Okay, so as far as the casting latex, uh, let's open this up. This is what it looks like, and uh, let's see. There were these metal tabs that were around it kind of as a seal. I took those off a second ago. This was, I don't know, 55 bucks or so. Quite milky. It's definitely more like a paint, uh, much thinner 
than the stuff I've used before, which isn't necessarily bad. And then as I go on this first coat, I really want to get this into all the little um, cracks and crevices. Just make sure this thing is really in there. And it, thin is good, so don't worry about thick. You, you're not aiming for thick on this, especially this first coat or two. It's, it's about really getting the, the shape. And then we'll let this dry. And again, one coat is hardly anything. It's not even a latex glove. Um, by the time you've got 15 coats on here, it's going to be a pretty thick rubber. It is day number two, uh, so all the latex has dried. Uh, you can see overall it feels, well, um, it feels like rubber. Uh, thicker definitely in the spots that it kind of fell into. A little bit of air bubbles, but totally fine. Uh, translucent now, but this thing's gonna turn more and more white as I put more coats on here. Uh, and I got my lip down below. So, uh, good first coat. This is the spot where you'd put a seam in. So if you need a seam in a statue, uh, that was, if you look at my uh, past series, you'll see the um, seam I did there. This thing is pretty close where I could peel this thing over and I think I could probably pop it off. I might need a seam here where it's thin, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this thing as just a single uh, without any uh, splits, without any seam. See if I can get this thing to, to work right. So let's dive in and um, start painting. And just like that, the statue, as far as the latex rubber, is wrapped up. Uh, 13, possibly 14 coats. I might have forgotten to mark it one time. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it, uh, it's kind of an off-white, yellowish kind of color. That's pretty normal for latex rubber. Uh, a couple of big things. Uh, I did not do any filler. So uh, a lot of times when you have crevices, you know, like uh, in between, there's, you know, these kind of spots here. Um, a lot of times with the latex rubber, you'll do um, this filler that ends up, as you, you put it in there, it creates kind of this, this blob so that the fiberglass pops off real easy, makes it really nice. Um, I wanted to try this without any of that. I've got a couple statues I've done where I don't put filler. I do sometimes have to put an extra piece of, or extra section of fiberglass to be able to get this thing to, you know, pull apart. I can't just like pick it up as one piece, where if it was all like just a blob down, I could just pick it up and then, you know, pull it across. But All right, we're gonna go ahead and call that good for part one. I'm gonna make this a two-part video. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the second part. I just finished most of the footage for it, but um, this is actually the statue after I took it back out. And uh, so part one, we just finished all this mold uh, for the uh, statue. Part two is the shell that goes over it and then actually making the statue, which is still uh, curing, drying inside. So that's coming soon. Check out part two. And um, if you got questions or comments, anything I can do to help, let me know. I try to check comments peri periodically and answer questions. Uh, but uh, hopefully this was helpful and have a good life. Billy, no. <laughs> Billy, no. 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 And so I want to encourage you to tune in and watch part two as far as the making the mother mold, the shell that goes over this, and then actually making... Oh, my goodness. Billy, no. What are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Why are you doing that? 
She's such a pest. She's like, I'm not getting my attention. Let's go ahead and grab something. Bruh. Millie. No!